all dry. Burning from the sun, all around, and hard for all living things. Hot and hot and endless. Even reptiles struggle. Welcome to Sahara Desert. Today's video discusses the Sahara Desert, specifically from the perspective of Versa Vista. Please stay with us until the end of the video. How is the Sahara Desert? I must say that the size of this desert, which occupies almost the entire northern part of Africa, can be compared to the United States. The area of this desert is 9 million square kilometers, covering 11 African countries. In 1922, the highest temperature recorded here was 57.8 degrees Celsius. Let's first understand why such a large desert was formed in the African country. Do you think it has always been a desert or was it something else before? The map of the African desert you see covers the entire northern part of Africa and is the world's largest desert after the South Pole. But you might find it hard to believe that this desert is relatively new and scientists estimate that about 6,000 years ago this desert was completely green. A large population lived in this green land and all kinds of animals were found there. However, it's quite strange that in a land that was once fertile and green, not only are there no creatures living there now, but humans have also fled from it. Back when the desert was lush and green, there was another large river called Taman Reset, in addition to the Nile River. This river, originating from the Atlas Mountains in North Africa, flowed for a long distance before pouring into the Atlantic Ocean. This water-rich river, with its width reaching kilometers in some areas, dried up about 5,000 years ago. In 2015, NASA revealed through photos taken of the African desert that numerous rivers used to flow in this desert. Right in the middle of the desert, there was a lake called Mega Chad. It's hard to believe that such a lake existed in this now extremely dry desert with an area of 388 500 square kilometers. This indicates that the area was once a paradise with diverse vegetation. You should know that this lake, with all its grandeur, has slowly and naturally dried up, completely disappearing. However, its impact on the desert is evident, showing that there used to be a lake in this part of the desert. Now, what happened to turn this green area with a tumultuous river and a grand lake into the vast desert it is today? What caused this devastation? I must say, there are several theories in response to these questions. David Rye, an archaeologist, claims that the destruction of this region is due to animals. He says that the favorable environment has led to an increase in animals such as cows, sheep, and goats which have grazed away all the plants. Moreover, at that time, the predators of these animals, such as wolves or lions and other wild animals, were scarce and not sufficient to keep the population of these cows and sheep in balance. For this reason, the population growth of these animals has not stopped and has increased significantly. As a result, all the plants in this area have been consumed by these animals and due to overgrazing, the vegetation of this area has suffered irreparable damage. It's important to know that when plants are removed from the soil, the soil absorbs more heat from the sun. This gradually makes the region warmer. The warming of the land, like cancer, in this area progresses, and slowly the entire region becomes dry. It might be unimaginable that this once lush and grassy area 
could transform into a waterless and barren desert in a relatively short period, between 200 to 300 years. There are other theories about the cause of the emergence of this desert. Some believe that animals are not to blame, and the axial tilt of the Earth is the reason, which has shifted slightly. They argue that this axial tilt shift occurs every 20,000 years, so that for 20,000 years it becomes a desert, and for the next 20,000 years it transforms into a lush green region. So, based on this theory, one might hope that perhaps in the future, or better to say, 20,000 years later, this desert could once again turn into a paradise. The Sahara Desert has captured the curiosity of many people, and researchers are actively exploring this vast expanse. Some scientists believe that during the Mesozoic era, the time of dinosaurs, parts of the Sahara were underwater. Fossils of whales, as well as other aquatic fossils, have been found in certain areas of the desert. Interestingly, dinosaur fossils have also been discovered in the Sahara. One notable dinosaur fossil is that of a sauropod, measuring 32 meters from head to tail and weighing as much as 60 tons. It's intriguing to note that fossils of this dinosaur have been found not only in Africa, but also in Europe. This suggests that the Sahara Desert was once connected to Europe. This is remarkable because until 2018, scientists believed that dinosaurs were unique to each continent. The Sahara Desert has many fascinating aspects, but one of the most peculiar discoveries so far is in Mauritania, also known as the Eye of the Sahara. Now, why is it called the Eye of the Sahara? The reason is that all satellites can capture this eye and its structure resembles several concentric rings that progressively decrease in size. The diameter of this phenomenon, the eye of the Sahara, is approximately 50 kilometers. It's important to note that this eye is only visible from space, and if you are in the African region, you cannot observe it. The first satellite to discover this eye was NASA's Gemini 4. After NASA released images of this phenomenon, it sparked widespread curiosity about how this eye came into existence and how these rings orderly arranged themselves to create a structure resembling an eye. Initially, many speculated that it resulted from a meteorite impact, but this theory was quickly dismissed as there was no evidence of such an impact. Various theories have been proposed about the Eye of the Sahara, with the most famous suggesting that extraterrestrials have access to the Earth's depths from this point. Another theory claims that it is the gateway to the lost city of Atlantis. Since NASA published these images, no credible source or scientist has been able to provide a definitive answer as to what this really is and how it came into existence. It is hard to believe to be a natural phenomenon due to its highly organized structure, and for this reason it is known as the biggest mystery of the African continent. Another interesting phenomenon in this vast desert is the Skeleton Coast, a dangerous area with high sand dunes along the Atlantic Ocean. Stretching precisely from southern Angola to central Namibia, the name Skeleton is inspired by the whale skeletons and approximately a thousand ships that got stranded on this coast over the centuries. Local people believe that this region is divinely created with anger. Please share your thoughts on the Eye of the Sahara. If you enjoyed watching this video, kindly share it with your friends.